destiny path that God has ordained for you and for me. All right, we'll, we'll pick this up later. Lord, we worship you and praise you in Jesus' mighty name. Whew. Okay. I think I'm going to speak in tongues for 20 minutes now. <laughs> anyway, welcome and God bless you. I love you so much. I think you know that. I hope you can feel that. I hope you know that there's a prophet in the world that cares about you. You, 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 you. And it's not just a myth and it's not just like uh, something preached from the platform, but it's a genuine, real thing. And I want to welcome all of our friends and partners and family and our tribe, our people, our teams from all over the world into this moment right now that we're having here. And, uh, you know, I love these Ricola candies, you know these? Excuse me. And um, <clears throat> the Lord is uh, speaking to me a, a sister title, a brother title, another family title to another book I'm writing called The Focus Factor. And I'm going to tell you what it is. It's, it's called Destiny Determinators. Isn't that a cool word? Determinators. 
Like you think about the Terminator, you know, the Terminator went on the mission to rid the world of the evil, you know, the Skynet or whatever it was, you know, in the movie uh, series. And, and, you know, everybody knows the Terminator. So it's a good analogy to throw out. But uh, God, you know, has uh, a, a Terminators of failure, Terminators of loneliness, Terminators of sin, Terminators of distractions and deceptions and denials and delays. and Excuse me, I'm sweating and crying at the same time. And uh, wow, it's like there's fire, there's fire in this studio today. I'll tell you, oh Lord. Take a drink, take a drink, take a touch, take a touch. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. It's yours, it's yours, it's yours, it's yours. Oh God. Father, touch my friend right now. You know, I, I've come to understand something. The anointing is everything. And the reason why we ever feel frustrated is because we're just longing for more of God. The only reason we ever feel dissatisfied is because there's something more that we're supposed to have, with something more we're supposed to be, something more we're supposed to be doing, something more we're supposed to be coming, you know, that we're becoming. And, and then <clears throat> that um, there's something that's still limited and lacking, and the Lord doesn't want you to be lacking anything. You know, the scripture from beginning to end is filled with promises of uh, truth saying that he, he, he freely and loves to give us all things. It's his good pleasure to give us the kingdom. It's the Father's good will. Jesus said, that as he sent me, so I'm sending you. He said, I want, in John 15, 16, I want you to bear fruit and I want it to remain. He said in Psalm 66, 12, 66, 12, uh, of Psalm, the Psalm said, men rode over your heads for a season. You had your trials and your ups and downs and tribulations, but I want to bring you into a wealthy place. The scripture talked about Hebzibah, Rehoboth, uh, Beulah, and uh, Bethel, and um, Canaan, okay? Those are like four or five, you know, altar places, not just places of altars to have church. Uh, it was more than that. It was like a, a, a sy symbolic of a crossing over into a new day and a new season. You know, crossing over the Jordan, the muddy Jordan was like there was Canaan on the other side. Remember he told Joshua, cross over this river. And he said, and then everywhere the sole of your foot treads, I'll give it to you. Joshua 1.3. Joshua 6.16 says, shout for the Lord has given you the city. After they marched around uh, about instruction of the Lord, Joshua told the people, shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Can you imagine? The Lord wants to give you a city. The Lord wants to give you a nation. One more, Isaiah 66, verse 5 to 8. And a few verses uh, from the fifth verse, from verse number 5 in Isaiah 66, the last book. And Isaiah's book had 66 chapters. The Bible has 66 books. Isn't that, that's a cool number. Six is the number of man. And man is the one that needs... Uh, everything. And six was the day when God, uh, was the sixth day when God finished his creation and then he made man and said they're very good. The garden and man in the garden and pulled the woman out of the man and said this is very good. Everything else he said it was good and it was very good. I, believe me, it was more than very good, all of it. But then at the end he, when he made man and then pulled the woman out and put the woman with him, he said this is very good. So God has like afforded us every reality to have everything. And uh, Isaiah 66, verse 5, to the 8th verse, and then a couple of verses after that, talks about, can a nation be born in a day? Can a whole, uh, an entirely new, an entire new, a whole new, a beautiful new dispensation of glory and power, even to raise nations to, to higher levels, can that come in a day? He said, yes, when Zion travails, she gave forth birth to her children. You know, we were taught in the church that that was only meaning to be meaning that it's our intercession. It's the intercessors that births like a revival or, a, you know, evangelism in the city. Oh, my God, it's so much more than that. Let me tell you what I see in it. When Zion travailed, you are Zion, you are the church. Yes, you are Zion, you are the church. The Zion is the is the place like the city whose builder and maker was God. The place of Ecclesia, E-K-K-L-E-S-I-A, -E -E or E-C-C-L-E-S-I-A, -E -E depending on how you spell it in the Greek word, which means the called apart, set apart ones, the ones that gather in my name, my own body, my own chosen vessels, my own sons and daughters, my own kings and queens, my own lords and kings. And uh, these were the ones that 
uh, were, were, were signified as Zion. Zion was, Mount Zion was that place where the heavenly visitation came down and the angels came. And it's a place of glory, kingdom, right? So you are in that because you are God's son and you are in that woman, that's a firm man, and you are God's daughter woman. So you are in that thing and you are a part of Zion. So when Zion travailed, what does travail mean? Like to give forth in birth. Let me tell you something. That's also talking about your vision for your life, the mission for your life, the purpose and the life assignment that God has for you in your life. You got to birth that thing out and then it's like becomes like a nation. Look on and I look back a little bit in Isaiah 60, same writer, same 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, the last chapter. Zion is the place of God's splendor and glory. Go back to the 60th chapter in Isaiah when he said, um, you'll have double for your trouble. Where he said that, uh, arise and shine for the glory of the Lord is yours, is risen upon you, though gross darkness is overshadowing the earth. My light shall be seen upon thee, and kings will come to the brightness of thy rising. And he said, from near and far, sons and daughters will come to you. All right? Isaiah 55, same writer, go back. But then he said, the glory of the heathen, the wealth of the heathen, the wealth of nations will come to you. Are you seeing this? I am, I am like, I'm putting it in, man. I'm loading it up, and we're saying, let's go. The whole arsenal is full. We don't, we need to understand that. You know, I know you go through things and people hurt you and people dejected you and rejected you and betrayed you and hurt you. Oh, we've all had that happen. Oh my God. Oh my God. OMG, all caps with smiley, sad smiley, crying tears faces behind it. Dot, 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 dot. But man, you, you, you have to remind yourself. That's why, that's, you know, I'm, I'm having a personal visitation here. That's why I'm sitting here. I, I, even my staff, they, 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 they're they gone. They, they went. I said, no, good, good. Let me be by myself. I'll, I'm, I'm by myself here right now because I just wanted to have my own moment of worship. I love it. You can feel the presence of God here. It's not that he's not here when our other people are here because they're all in the flow and they're in tune. It's great. But it's just I just love the fact that God just gave me, you know, this, this, this way that I could just do this. My, I'm having my own personal visitation here. And you know what I'm doing? I'm reminding myself now, even by speaking to you, because get this, and I felt like saying this earlier. I thought, I had the thought, and then I thought, ah, I better not say that. I might, people might not see that the right way. But let me say it anyway. Every preacher, as he's preaching to the people, he's also preaching to himself. Even Billy Graham, who you think would be the exempted one. I really gave it some deep thought for a few minutes, about a couple of minutes, not long. And I thought, well, Billy Graham didn't do that. He always came out and brought the message of salvation. Didn't, never talked about himself, never talked about money, never talked about healing, never talked about Holy Spirit, never talked about uh, kingdom. He only talked about Christ came to save the lost. And you can be a recipient of that tonight, dear one. You know, Billy Graham. But you know what, I, you know what, you know what I'm seeing in that right now? Billy Graham, even the great Billy Graham, who brought that message, a selfless message, just to bring it to the people, his assignment was to win souls. God called him as an evangelist, and he was also doing his work, speaking to the people, and as they would connect, then that was the fulfillment of his own assignment. Don't tell me that everything is not absolutely relevant to each person, including the one that's speaking. So... We're rem I'm reminding you, and I'm prophesying and declaring and teaching and declaring to and making declarations to you, but it's hitting all of us. And we, but we need to do this. This is an exercise we want to do. And I, I'm writing this book now. Uh, I just, it's, it's actually something I had written, and I just have a printed copy of uh, a part of it here. This is something I'd already written. You know, I'm, I've been brilliant for a while. I, I didn't get brilliant five minutes ago. So uh, it is something I wrote, and it's, I thought, wow, this is another book. Another book, I have so many books that I'm writing, but I call, I, I, the Lord helped me entitle this Destiny Determinators. Destiny Determinators. Determinators. Yeah. Determinators. Yeah. Destiny Determinators. And they determine the destiny. Another book I'm writing, your decisions are, are determining your destiny and the focus factor. And the Lord will teach, the Lord, Lord teach me to profit and the power to get wealth and 
Oh, God. Laws of success and keys to successful living. I have so many. The benefits of excellence. And then some prophetic books about the prophetic ministry and the prophetic office and anointing. I'm loaded. I have too much. And that's just a few that I have, like, in front of me. I have a few of them here. You can just see I got a few of my books that I've been working on here. Some are even full color on the inside. Can you imagine? Look at that. Whoa, who does that? And, um, but these are just cops. And, and these are just my master set that's on my desk. The, the, the whole lot of them, many printings have sold out, and we need to reprint. We need to do expanded editions. So there's a lot of work on the, on the plate ahead of us. And sometimes you feel overwhelmed with all this. So, Lord, I have so much work. I need so much help. But you got to just stop for a minute and say, let us, let us declare and remind ourselves, and let me teach and preach and speak to you and declare prophetically to you how much power is really in you and in your destiny, how much God has already provided. I think the Lord could be really, really upset. Like, I hope he doesn't get too mad at us. I mean, that's a scary thing to think about the fear of the, in the fear of the Lord sense. But uh, when, he, when he says, I've given you this, and I, what did I just say? He he's freely gives us all things. We have the mind of Christ. I had not seen, ear had not heard, nor has it entered the heart of man, the great things that God's prepared for those, who, those of us who love him. 1 Corinthians 2.9. 1 Corinthians 2.16 says, We have the mind of Christ. Isaiah 66, verse 8 again says, A nation can be born in one day when Zion travails. Let me tell you something about the Zion travail. I know they taught you that it just that's just about a spiritual movement that is selfless and just for a, a city or a nation or a society. And it is that because revival and reformation do need to come to cities and nations and all that. But they have to come to you also first. And if you don't get revived first, how are you going to bring revival to anybody else? If it hasn't first touched your house, how's it going to touch anybody else's house? So God has to build you a house. He has to put you in a, in a palace. He has to put you in a place. Are you hearing this voice today? Now, I didn't say my name. I'm Thomas Manton IV, God's prophet to the nations and your success strategist. This is, these are some success keys and, and strategies that will just absolutely sets you on the course of your destiny, and you need to get moving quicker now, because time, the clock is ticking, tick-tock, 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 tick We don't have, we don't have all day. Um, I, I remember there's a movie, there's a, one movie I could recommend, okay? You know all these movies going on today, you, you, you may watch them, even the most spiritual people may watch a movie that you don't think they should be watching, but you know, they're just everywhere. And we try not to. We try to avoid all that, of course, especially the fake news. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psh, I had to say that. But uh, there, there's a movie I can recommend to anybody. I really liked it. It's called, it's, there's no uh, cussing. There's no violence, uh, gore, gory violence. There's no, uh, there might be a sword fight or something like that. But, you know, they don't show the, you know, all this other stuff. And it's a clean, old-school movie that has a real great story. It's called The, Ma the, the Count of Monte Cristo. I had an argument with a, a Lebanese man in, in uh, the Middle East when I was there about the other version. He liked the old one, the first one that was done in 1960-something or 70. I watched that. It was pretty boring. I mean, the story was there, but I thought, nah... This new one that they did in 2002, and guess who played the lead actor? It was, uh, it was Jim Caviezel, the one who played uh, Jesus in The Passion of the Christ. You know that guy? Jim Caviezel. And man, he, did a, he knocked it out of the park. He, he did a bang-up job on that one. I mean, in a good way, phenomenal. The Count of Monte Cristo. And um, there was like a, 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 a scene about how... This guy said, I have all the time in the world. He was the wicked uh, pr uh, island prison master guy at the Chateau, Chateau d'If, they called it, which was like a big rock surrounded by water, and they used to go there by boat, take the prison, and they made caves, and it was really horrible. So it was a horrible place to be. And this guy, Jim Caviezel, the falsely accused... Uh, uh, man was brought there because he had too much information against the evil powers above. And they sent him away there to just die and stay there and live, live out. And he found, you see this, the movie, he found a way of escape. And then 
the guy who was the, the evil uh, 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 warden, you know, of the island, the, the evil taskmaster there, the ruler, he, uh, he said, come on, we don't have all day. And then he stopped and he thought, wait a minute. <clears throat> yes, I do. I have all the time in the world. And he began to laugh. Ha, 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 ha. It's like that story in the Bible, the one that says, hey, let's have another party. Let's have another feast. And the Lord said, thou fool, don't you know your soul will be required of you this night? He didn't know. And sure enough, Jim Caviezel was in that bag that they were going to throw. The old man died. And then he was, I can't give away the story in case you didn't see it. But he got the guy. I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to tell you the story. I don't want to give it away because when you get to that scene and you see what happens, you're like, oh, getting, you know, if you hadn't seen it yet, I can't spoil it for you. So watch the movie, you'll see but the guy, here's the point. The guy was saying, I have all the time in the world. Ha, 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 ha. And he didn't know that that was the last hour of his life. He had no idea. So the point is, in this, in this dispensation we're living in, we need to value time and we need to move in <clears throat> what God has given us to do. And that's the first, that is the first premise of of gaining success is time management, valuing what you have and using it all to um, fulfill your mission. That's the first destiny determinator. <laughs> I love the title. Destiny determinator. Glory. I, I'm excited. All right. Now, check this out. Here's a title. Subtitle of the title. What are you... Thinking, planning, saying, and doing. Let me do it on these other fingers. What are you thinking, planning, saying, and doing? For these are your destiny determinators. What are you thinking? What are you planning? What are you saying? And what are you doing? Man, I got so mad. I got so mad. I've been through something. I mean, I've been through something in my emotions, in my mind. I got I to gotta tell you the truth. I, I got to tell you. It's not that I don't tell you the truth anyway. But I, mean, I got to be, I mean, meaning I got to open up a little bit and tell you a little bit about this painful feeling I've had. When I got to realize that everything, even in the church world, is not necessarily for you. <clears throat> everything in... <clears throat> Excuse me, <clears throat> Christendom and society. It's not necessarily all for you. And some people are they're, they're on their own mission. You know, you're watching somebody shine, and then you have the same the same God that called them called you. I'm talking to preachers. I'm talking to business entrepreneurs. Now, if you're called to be like a son or daughter in the house. And you're being you're in training for reigning and you're being raised up to be someone. You have to submit yourself in the process under the up under covering and up under a mentor. That might be me through me or through another pastor or apostle or OK, but but uh, you can watch somebody and it's just the endless same thing all over and over and over. And it's their own game. It's their own. You, you remember the remember the saying, not my circus, not my monkeys. <laughs> A Polish proverb from Poland in Europe. Can you imagine those Eastern Europeans? I would laugh till I fell down. They say, "Tell me in your language how it sounds." Are like, <laughs> they say, "I can't do that." Eastern European, you know the Russian accent, da darling. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love listening to them talk. Can you imagine someone, a Polish person, speaking in their <clears throat> their own language or in that? <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm sorry. The Eastern European. <laughs> See, not my circus, not my monkeys. <laughs> I'm not equating anybody to an animal or a circus, but, and it's not that it's not good. You got to understand something. Some could be good, but it's not good. I got to tell you this. I got to tell you this. I've had pain over this. I've experienced pain over this. And it's like, it's not something that's going to edify promote and release you because you're not in that thing. There's no place in there for you. And all of a sudden, somebody somebody hooks up. 
something hooks up. Oh, just God Almighty! You know, God always uses people. I found that out. It doesn't. It doesn't always happen when you're by yourself. I wish it would. I wish every day, every hour of every day, by yourself or by myself, that I would be able to have all the wisdom, all the knowledge, all the understanding. All the, you know, activation of giftings and, you know, and I have gifting and I am gifted, but you know what I mean? I'm talking about for, for other, all the other things that I need to be doing. And, and it just, just that I would just make the, just every hour of every day would just be like bang, 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 bang. And I'd never get diverted and I'd always be accomplishing hundred percent, more than a hundred percent, hundred percent plus what I'm supposed to be doing. But you know what? Sometimes it doesn't happen because you're, you're in an environment that seems good, I gotta say it, but it's not the place that's going to enliven and illuminate and promote you and the thing that's in you. It's not a destiny kicker. It's not a destiny determinator. It's not a success strategy. It's not a, 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 a catalyst for the change that you need for you to get onto the the road that you're supposed to be walking on to the place called there. <clears throat> man, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm sorry. I'm telling you, that's painful. <clears throat> that's painful. <laughs> Smart water. <clears throat> A long one, I hope that helps him. So we need to think, we need to grow up, we need to be like eagles, not like chickens, we need to fly high, not low, we need to do what Paul said, press on to the mark of the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus and not go the low road. Let me tell you something, there's some churches, and I'm, a, I'm in the office of the prophet, okay, and I don't say that to promote myself, I had some absolute belligerent moron, excuse my Chinese, Come on my page and write a message about how dare you say what you are. I thought, I'm just delineating the operation. I'm not giving myself a pat on the back or a title because this is a lot of work. And I got to tell you something. If you're a bona fide prophet, oh my God, the warfare, the life you live, the things you go through, the things that happen. I, don't, I wouldn't wish a lot of them on an enemy, never mind a friend. So don't think it's just all like, oh, you're a prophet. Wow, great. Isn't that great? Isn't that a big title? <laughs> it's a big job. It's a big responsibility. Yes, yeah, glorious. Yes, yeah, powerful. When you can prophesy and hear things and know things and tell people, <coughs> excuse me, people get enamored by that. <clears throat> there came a move in the like 90s, you know, to the 2000s where like everything was, everybody wanted to be a prophet. Everybody wanted, wants a prophet. And every pastor said they have to call himself an apostle. Oh my God, you call yourself an apostle? You, you're a, you, you might be a joker. Are you, do you have apostle grace? Can you handle apostle, de, apostle warfare? You gotta be kidding me. An apostle is one who's blazing a trail and they've done it hard enough in another office, I always say whether they be an evangelist, a pastor, a prophet, or a teacher, and they're doing that enough until they've blazed enough of a trail that their mantle and anointing and their influence and impact and touch of their ministry has gone. They've blazed the trail. And now it's like, you know, it could become like a fatherly and another level of blazing trails, apostolic. And an, ap an apostle is a birther of works. How many works are you birthing while you're calling yourself an apostle? I, I was with a real apostle the other day, and what a, what a, what a real apostle. He's birthing churches left and right, and the Lord had me prophesy to him that uh, from the platform, they had all the churches in North America there in a conference, and uh, it, was, it was awesome. I mean, <clears throat> in a beautiful big um, property there. <coughs> Excuse me, beautiful facility, and <clears throat> man... I was like, and the Lord, and the Lord said, wealth, more wealth, more treasure, more properties, more buildings coming, coming, coming. It's a reward because he's already been doing a lot. You know what I mean? God's going to reward the man. And also it's going to be used to build the kingdom and all these things are coming. And it's like churches, branches all over the world. That's not a joke. That's a person who's building works. Okay. 
either like in, in you're building a media empire or you're building a church empire or you're building a, don't get scared of the word empire, or you're building a, a kingdom empire somehow and there's really something happening. Man, that's, that's a real apostle, okay? And a lot of times, most of them don't want to take the title. They're just like, call me doctor, call me pastor, call me... They don't want to say, I am apostle so-and-so, apostle. And then you have to tell them they're an apostle and get over it, man. If I call someone apostle, an apostle is because I've... I could say it myself when they don't even want the title. Because I've discerned and recognized the grace and the power that's in their ministry. And I'm saying it affectionately as a level of, of honor to just speak out in truth and reality what they really are about. But it has nothing to do with this grandioseness of titles. If you, if you need a title, you need, to, you need to grow up some more. Why am I saying that? You know, your, your name, your first name and your last name and where you're from and what you do and how you look should be recognizable to many people when the work that you've done and what the Lord has done through you, he's done through us, he's done through... You, you, it's like recognized by even to millions of people. <clears throat> now you say, well, <clears throat> if I, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I'm in here. <clears throat> if I, I'm okay, I'm fine. It's just the dust and the what, I don't know what it is. And uh, the Lord is, um, you know, able to like let, let it be seen and known like what you're about and what you're doing you're a pastor you have a grace to shepherd people you're a teacher you're a teacher you're you're a, an evangelist man you're an evangelist you're a prophet you're a man you're a prophet if you're an apostle wow well, you're an apostle the fruit of it's evident the grace of an apostle paul talked about the marks of the apostle the grace of the apostle he said i've been made an apostle by jesus christ you mean i like to put this here and I like to spin it around and play with it. And I like to look at the nations because a lot of these countries, God sent me, a, a sending me as a voice. And what we say happens and revolutionary things happen in countries. That's the, that's the governmental realm of the office of the prophet. That's what that is. <clears throat> so <clears throat> it's evident. All right. A little exhortation in there by the Holy Ghost. Let me get back to my notes here. Destiny the Terminators. We have to grow up. And I have a lot of sub uh, notes in here and things in here, but I, I just want to skip through this a bit for, for brevity of, of sake of time. What are you thinking, planning, saying, and doing? All right, I was talking about the connection factor. And, and I, I, because I'm, I've walked through this and it's somewhat painful because you feel like you've lost time and you've, diverted your energy and finance and time and love to people who don't reciprocate. They could act like they love you, but you're not part of the game plan and they're just carrying on. And then when you, you know, ministries it can be a little bit funny because a ministry, uh, a professional person who's seasoned in the thing, I mean, they, they're supposed to smile at everyone and love everyone. They're just doing their thing and you're like, you could just be sitting there doing nothing and they won't roll your stone. They won't kick you in the shin and say, hey, <clears throat> they won't come up and grab you and shake you and say, you know what, I see this, like, do this. They may not just leave you there. They may just leave you sitting there. Meanwhile, you think, oh, yeah, I'm a part of something. I know I'm talking to people because you're not getting what you need. Let me tell you something. You'd be better off. I got to say it. A pastor may not say this. There's not a church shouting message. <clears throat> a teacher may not have the... <clears throat> the grace and the equipment to say this, but evangelists may not tell you this, probably wouldn't. But as a prophetic voice to the nations and to the body of Christ worldwide, I can tell you something. Some people, you'd be better off getting a visitation of God out walking in the rain, kicking rocks, skipping through the mud by yourself with tears rolling down your face, wondering what's going on in your life. So that God could shake you and give you a visitation from heaven. That could literally give you revelation where you'll rise up and begin to move 
to go and shake the known world and become a world shaker and a history maker, as I always say. And uh, the world will become a better place to live because you arrived there. Then you sitting to do that and to see that and to have that result from that. Rather than sitting in a church all the time, thinking you're doing somebody's service, a pastor or God, even God, I'm doing your service because I'm going to your house. That is that can that can often I don't know I gotta say it I know this is this is really revolutionary it's not just revelatory it's revolutionary because it's gonna really rock a, a lot of a lot of boats and maybe sink some maybe get some people to rise up and get busy like I'm a I'm a fire starter I'm a I'm a, I'm a, I'm an activator man I'm an initiator I'm kicking you I'm kicking I'm kicking your can <laughs> I don't think that's funny I'm kicking your can mate boom get up get up. Get up, get up, get out, sit down, worship God, remind yourself, think about his promises I was sharing earlier in this broadcast about all the things he said he's already prepared for us. I just shared a few. There are many more. I can go on for hours and just uh, a few of them and, uh, and, and, and begin to get busy and get out there and get going. You know, some people think they're, they're um, Please, please, you know, pleasing man, you, you got to be careful not to want to do that because that really doesn't give you much reward. And then you may think you're pleasing God. Well, I'm going to your house like a religious thing. I got to go to church Sunday morning, whatever. But you know what? Is the Sunday morning, let me tell you something. Is the Sunday morning hot enough that it's rocking your Monday through Saturday? It's rocking your world. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Saturday all through the week, there was a song that said like, uh, how did it go? A funny song, I don't even know, but I just like, I like the way the tune sounded, but I can't endorse it. I don't endorse the song. You go Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, all through the week, yeah. It's like one of them kind of like funny kind of uh, jazzy kind of songs. You know? I don't know, would you call that kind of hip hop or R&B, maybe R&B, yeah. And I was like, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And I, I did that one time when I was preaching as a joke somewhere in Africa. And this little little girl that was the daughter of uh, one of our partners, she's about nine years old. She looked up and her eyes just started blazing. She smiled and chuckled. She got it. I mean, just like, and she was like, yeah. And she was telling her mom the whole week, I love the prophet. I love the prophet. Mommy, when are we going back to see Thomas Mendel? When are we going to go back to the meeting? And we had to come because the, the little daughter wouldn't leave the mother alone. She was touched. And I'm, I'm also looking for to, to, to speak into the next generation, into the life of the youth. They need to rise up and not be like everybody else. The last thing you want to be in this world is just like a religious stick in the mud. In other words, you put your stick in the mud and it's stuck there and that's you. And you're not, um, you're not producing fruit. You're not in your assignment. You're not even happy. Oh, I got to say something, and this is painful. And this can come from experience. And sometimes we wonder, Lord, why do I feel these emotions? Why do I go through this? What is, I mean, you feel like, you feel like a total, you feel like a, you feel bad. I don't want to say any other words. We need to speak well of ourselves. But you just feel bad. You feel bad. You feel, it's so unfortunate. But you know what? When you feel that, it's good because you can taste and now you can help other people get out of that nonsense. Get out of that mess. They don't have to do that. Let me tell you something. If you walk out of a place and you feel like a nobody, you are a nobody there. There. Not in reality, but you're there. Now I've got to explain a principle to you. And this is, a, this is another destiny determinator. You can almost be the wrong person in the right place and get more blessed than being the right person in the wrong place. Because you could be all right, full of power, full of glory, and somebody else doesn't see it like that. You're not one. You're not in their clique. You're not in their club. You're not in their in club. There's something that they have a prejudice about, or you know, and you're just not. You're just not anything special in their deal, okay? And then um, you 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 just feel sad. You feel overlooked. You feel like there's nothing to do there. Oh, you got to make a note of that, man. There's a principle like. Go where you're celebrated, not where you're tolerated. Don't just be merely tolerated. And there's people that like preach that, and it's great. And there's other people that speak against that and say, well, we're supposed to go into the cities and invade, and the devils get mad, the people don't even want it. But we're going there to invade with the gospel. Fine, do your own seminar. Both are right. Both have their point. 
But the principle in the realm of success is very much leaning on the side of celebration as opposed to toleration. You can't be in situations and in places where people where where, where your, your glory is not manifesting. It's not about just the favor of man either, where people like just see you uh, one way or the other. Forget about that. How do you feel? What what is God getting excited about? Because when God gets excited, God gets very excited about me sitting here right now. I could have chose to just not take my time to come on. And I had to switch all this stuff on myself. I don't care. I'm the man for the job. I know how to rig it up and do it. I'm doing it myself. So I'm the production man and the preacher and the prophet and the technician and all. And, and the music director, because I'm, pl- I'm pushing the button on the iPhone and getting through the Bluetooth into the big speaker. And, and I'm, I'm creating the atmosphere with the worship. So I'm the worship leader too now. I mean the, uh, or, or, or the, the maestro of the orchestra. I don't care, man. I could say, hey, I, I, I don't know if I... But you know what? I'd be, I'd, be, I'd be taking this from you. So it's part of my work to help you. I want to encourage you. And, you know, you could be a... You could be a one-person majority. Anybody that's with God is a majority, not a minority. Anybody that's, that has victory in Jesus and in the Holy Ghost and the power of God, the anointing of God is on you. You are a world shaker and a history maker. You are a Goliath slayer. You are a giant in the faith and you are a gi- the other, the, and the other giants, you are their, you are their master. Off with their as David did to Goliath. So David went through a lot of emotional ups and downs. He was also rejected. He was also, uh, you know, overlooked by his own father. The prophet Samuel came to the house of Jesse to anoint the next king based on the instruction of the word of the Lord. Went through all the six sons and said they all look good. But he said, yet I haven't found, I don't bear witness with any of the six. I've gone down the list, try to lay hands, pray for them, pour the oil on them. And just like, no, 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 not getting it. You got past the six. And I said, I know the Lord told me to come here to anoint the next king. So he's here because God told me to come here. And Samuel said to Jesse, do you have another son? Because there's a son here that I haven't seen yet. He's the seventh son but he was the rejected one. Man, man, imagine, the prophet Samuel, that's a big deal. I mean, that's a huge deal. Coming to anoint the next king. I mean, coming to have a prophetic ceremony in somebody's house. Everybody knows about it. And the one that was the real king was not even invited inside. Oh, I feel the anointing. Just take a drink of that right now. There's a manifestation on that right now. The one who the builders rejected, himself, Jesus, became the chief cornerstone. The book of Peter said, chosen of God, rejected of men, but chosen by God. Paul was crazy. Nobody would have elected him. But he was the one that the Lord appeared to and called him and commissioned him and and said, this is going to be your work. I've called you as an apostle to do my work and to birth the church and to write to the churches. He, he was blazing trails and raising up churches and mentoring leaders and pastors. That's the work of an apostle. So he really did it. And he did it and suffered. Got to the point where he was taken out by uh, Nero in Rome. They brought him to Rome. That was it. That was his end. He said, I fought the fight. I finished, the, I finished my course. I fought the fight, the good fight. Now I'm ready to be offered up. He fulfilled the mission, but who, here's the point, who would have chosen him? Even David wasn't chosen. Even people didn't understand Jesus because, I'll prove it to you, because in John chapter 2, the mother of Jesus, Mary, had to tell the people, hey, whatever he says, do it. They didn't have that revelation yet. She had to tell them when he gave the instruction on what to do. And he did the miracle there, the first miracle at Cana of Galilee, turned the water into wine. And Jesus called for the water to come, fill the pots, because he was going to do something. They did not know he had the power. He hadn't done any miracles yet. They didn't know, but the Mary, Mother Mary, she knew. 
She, she had a witness about it. And she had to tell them all what to do. And they did it and the miracle happened. You see what I mean? So everybody doesn't see it. Even the man, I'll go one further. John chapter 5, the man at the pool of Bethesda. He, will, he wanted to get healed, but he couldn't even for 38 years. Then Jesus came himself and said, now what's your excuse? I'm here now. Get up and walk. Get going, man. And pick up your bed and carry it. That stupid thing. And then throw it away. And keep walking. You don't need that little stinking mat that you've been laying on all these years. Jesus got a bit, you know, probably feeling a bit annoyed, you know, at the man's unbelief. But he healed him anyway. He commissioned him anyway. He said, get up and walk. Let me tell you something about walking. Everything is walking. Go is the first two letters of the word good. Go is the first two letters of the word, of the name God. Woo-hoo. Go is the first two letters of the word gospel. So you got to go, 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 go. And Isaiah 48, 17, one of my favorite scriptures, as you know. You may know, but I'll tell you again if you didn't get it last time. And if you heard me say it before, I'm going to say it again. And don't worry, I'll say it again in other broadcasts too, because just I just love it. It's so powerfully prophetic and purpose-filled. Isaiah 48, 17, he says, I am the Lord your God who will teach you to profit. And lead you in the way you should go. Told Joshua, wherever the soles of your feet tread, by walking, there I've given it to you. So this thing about sitting down and waiting for something, you may sit there 20 years, man. Even in a church, I don't know why, I'm glad. I've had this in my spirit and mind for for ages and a long time, but I don't know. You know, it just has to come by the Holy Ghost when I'm really going to say it. But as a kingdom prophet, I got to tell you, not everything that glitters is gold. Not everything that's even good is for you. As I said, you'd be better out. You know, T.D. Jakes told a story, and you may or may not like T.D. Jakes, and I don't care because I, I, don't, I don't have any. I'm not giving any recommendations here for anybody, really. Uh, I, but I'll just tell you a story that he told. You know, he is a uh, well-established uh, man in the ministry. But when he was young, whether you agree with him on anything or not, and I don't, I'm not taking any position on any of it. I'm just telling you a testimony. When he was a younger man preaching, he came out of the church full of sweat. You know, he's the sweating guy. He called, I had a two napkin service. I had a two suit. I had a, almost had to change my suit. You know, you never saw a man. He must drink a lot of water. You never saw a man sweat like him. Sweat. He'd take that rag and he'd be rubbing his face and his head all through the service, sweating profusely while he's preaching. You know? T.D. Jakes, right? You've seen it. Yeah, God bless him. And, and uh, he's working hard. And he came out of the church completely drenched, soaked, and then it was raining. And then the, the well-to-do lady in the, in the congregation who had a Cadillac should have offered him a ride, but he actually was kicking rocks, going up, or dust. Or mud or what? Mud. Going over to the bus stop, stood in the bus stop, this is powerful, and was standing there with tears running down his face, drops of rain hitting him in the head and rolling down his face, sweat, rain, and tears, like blood, sweat, and tears. Remember that group? Rain, tears, and sweat running down his face, and he was already soaked. And he was, shoes were probably full of mud from crossing the road, standing in the bus stop, waiting to catch a bus, holding his Bible, shivering, soaking wet, crying tears, feeling bad because he didn't have a car. Uh, Nobody offered him a ride. He didn't care. He went to the bus. He went to the bus stop, standing with his Bible in his hand. I heard him tell the story. People were crying, listening. He was crying and when that happened, but he wasn't crying. He's not crying anymore. You get the point. He's not crying anymore. Get the point. God's promoted him a few times, a few levels, yeah? So, not crying anymore. And the lady, well-to-do lady with the car, the one that had the car, the Cadillac, who should have said, man of God, I'll offer you a ride, I'll take it. She didn't want him, his sweaty self, to get in her car, maybe, or she just didn't care, or she just indifferent, or she just in her own mind, and didn't think, you know. She drove on the road and hit a big pothole full of mud, muddy water, 
right in front of where T.D. Jakes was standing in the bus stop, and the big wall of water and mud splashed up from the lady's Cadillac, hit him, and just soaked him again, hit him in the face. So now, <laughs> now he's got rain, tears, sweat, and now mud, the fourth level. <laughs> the fourth degree of... <laughs> A fourth degree of pain and suffering. And he's soaked and he's standing there crying. Probably messed up his Bible. And there he was, he got in the bus and went home. Probably had it. Maybe he gave the suit to his wife and God knows what she did with it, huh? <laughs> Maybe he had to get a new Bible. Maybe they didn't even really give him any money for preaching either. But that was a season, huh? That was a moment. But he was true to the call and stayed with it. And then when the Lord said, move over to the other city, from where he was to Dallas and bought the church there from the other uh, evangelists. And I've known all of them and I've been in the, I've seen the building, I know. I know, I was around the time when they, when he did that and the Lord spoke to him, gave it to him and then he launched his whole thing there and everything blew up. Then TBN, uh, Paul Crouch called him to go on television Daily, the rest is history, and his name is around the world. But when he was when he was going, but he was focused on what he was doing. Are you understand what I'm saying? So you, here's the here's, a, here's an admonition and an encouragement and an exhortation. I'm be I'm be like your armor bearer for a minute. I'm gonna like grab you by the hand and hold you and push you forward and hold you, like the Aaron and Herb, and hold your arms up a little bit. Oh Moses, you Moses in the making. You Moses in the making. And uh, uh, get, up, get on the project and on the assignment and stop sitting somewhere where you don't belong. Get up and get out of there. Thus saith the Lord. Get up and get out. I, I want to say other things, but I, I, I got, I got, I got the, the Lord brought me to this. To stay right here for a minute. Father, I thank you right now that you're bringing a release from the shackles of man, whatever it is, whether it's a church, a ministry, a, a, you know, a family member, some kind of manipulation, whether it be evil or even something that seems good. And even someone that's in their element, in their assignment, but it's just like what they're doing. And that's not really releasing any power and grace for the person to be doing what you want. You know, God knows how he wants to activate you, who it's through and what, and then just let it happen like that. Now, I have uh, one father in the Lord who I've known for a very, very long time, and I'm not going to go much in detail. But uh, I hadn't seen him in a long time because I've been all over the world traveling on the mission field. And when we finally reconnected, he so embraced me and so honored me and so loved on me. I tell you, the experience was so tangible and so anointed, I couldn't stop weeping and crying for like 30 minutes in the conference. And then the next conference, the next two conferences he had, he asked me to speak. And uh, what, a, what an honor and a privilege. And he's not the kind of man that gives his pulpit to uh, almost, almost anybody. But there's some connection that it was deep. Now, now i got to say something. After that encounter, when I came back from that, it's like, like there was a shift, there was a release, there was a release. Now that tells me, that's proof, that's the marks and proof of a real apostle. Because the apostolic touch was there, and it also affected me somehow, you don't understand? And it activated, and it opened some things, and... Things that weren't necessarily open in other in other settings. Are you getting my drift here? You're getting the message. So you have to be very, 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 very strict and get. Now you may not have been, but you need to apologize to God and forgive yourself and say, Lord, it's bad as I've felt or whatever. I don't know why I stayed feeling like that. Now I got to get up <clears throat> and I have to get get full-blown into what I'm supposed to be doing. In Jesus' name, I declare there's an anointing and a grace coming over you today, in this 24-hour period right now, in this very hour, this very moment, but for like the next, the next many hours and several days.
Just the glory coming. I prophesy and declare. I'm Thomas Matthew the fourth. You know me. You know my voice. And I want to tell you, by the anointing and by the Holy Ghost, there's coming an outpouring of grace upon you, my friend, of the of the mantle and the anointing and the real, 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 real fruition, uh, uh, creating ability for your assignment. And you're going to see God begin to shift everything for you and put you into the place where you've been ordained to be. In Jesus' name. So I want to say this. An, a, a de another destiny determinator. An eagle believer. Hey, if you're out there watching, please like type a note. Say hi. Be friendly. I'm here by myself. I told you that, but I didn't intend to be all by myself anyway. Although I'm here worshiping God and speaking out in the winds of the four winds of the spirit to the four corners of the earth. Uh, by the airways, but you that are on, write me an amen. Say hello. Say something. Share this. Praise God. On the replay, you can also do that. The comments are still active, and they still work. So, an ego believer has direction. I wrote that, but you know what? It's boring at the bottom because you're clamoring around with everyone else. And it can feel a little bit lonely at the top. But I'd rather be at the top and, than to be clucking around on the bottom full of mess and still not feeling satisfied. And grooming your world for success is another point. You need to groom your own world for success. I'll explain more of that later. That's also another success strategy that I'm putting in another book on the topic of success. You need to groom yourself. You need to get groomed for success, all right? You that are coming on, God bless you. I'm not uh, saying name by name, but every one of you, I care about you. I love you. And as I was saying, every person that would type anything, even a smiley face, a check mark, hello, greetings, hallelujah, bless you, you can retype something that I said, or you could just say hi. And especially where you're, where you're watching from, I'm going to prophesy, prophetic, I'm going to pray a prophetic prayer over every person that's commenting on these broadcasts. So you better get busy and take a minute to type something, and there's a blessing in that for you. I want to see you there. I want to, I want to look at you. I want to see your, as a point of contact, I'm going to speak a blessing of grace and fire and anointing over every person that is connecting on the broadcast by typing something. And you can also become a partner and donate. I tell you, the Lord, I want to say it again. The Lord showed me. There's somebody <clears throat> that the Lord is speaking to or is going to speak to to donate some property to us, to me. And uh, something, a very large sum of money. It's going to be just a supernatural thing. And that's going to help us in the international glory of our missions work, which is so vast. And I'm just telling you, God is speaking to someone, and I will be hearing from you. I declare it again on the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. And I love the fact that everyone can be a partner, everyone can tithe, everyone can sow seed, everyone can be a tither, everyone can be a seed sower. That's phenomenal. And yet I just keep also seeing, you can do that on thomasmanton.com is our website. You can click on there and donate and become a partner and connect. And, and I, but I also see uh, it may be more than one person. Probably it is. But just some real, real hidden treasure, the Lord said. Something uh, great and significant that's going to be coming. And I just... Receive it in advance. Thank you, Lord, to advance your kingdom to help. Instagram's going. I love you. <clears throat> Thomasmanton.com is the website. I'm about to wrap up, and I'll pick this up another time. I don't know if I'll re-up on the, again on Instagram. And Instagram, I should be doing little short exhortation messages, like a little thought. I'm going to start doing that. But uh, the Lord bless you. Thomasmanton.com is where to connect up, and I'll see you on the next broadcast. <clears throat> All right. 
<coughs> I have so many more points here. God will, will lead you to the place called there. He'll help you get there. He'll help you get there. God wants you to do something about the afflictions that you see in the world. He's also not left us in the dark. You know, he, he wants to, he gives us light to see. You know, you can only do what you see and you can only move towards your most dominant thought. You can only move toward your dominant thought. What you're thinking about and what you're desiring gets magnetically attracted to you, spiritually, however you want to say. You know, there's a, a, a big thing that went on in the world, a book and a best-selling show, author and show and all that called The Secret. But it's no secret. It's a biblical principle. You know, and uh, as a man thinks, so is he. Think and Grow Rich was a great book written. But that, you know, the... the, the 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 origin of that is Proverbs twenty three seven. Here's my uh, jungle juice from Brazil. And that is good. <clears throat> so <clears throat> it's no secret that God is already revealing His secrets to you. No secret. God wants to get you somewhere. He wants to get you to the place called there. The place called there is a physical place, but it's also like a, a place where there's grace to run the race. It's also like connection with a company and a team and people. I put Instagram back on because I couldn't, I couldn't take this from them. I had to go around to. <clears throat> I hope you're grateful. It's easy just to say, well, I'm not going to get up and hit the screen again. I, uh, you got to hear this. So uh, the place called there is a place. It's a place where God's ordained for something to happen greatly, but it's also a, a place where there's grace to run the race. I got to tell you, you need to search, and I, and I was saying this earlier in, in many ways, but I got to say it succinctly again and make this point. You must find the operation and op functional operation in your daily life, where the Holy Spirit manifests himself and shows up through your gift and call and talent. You have to do that. If you do that, if you do that, that's where you'll get ideas. That's where you'll get um, empowerment, revelation. <coughs> Excuse me. And you'll also, you'll also feel good. You'll also feel good. How many want to feel good? You want to feel good? I do. Feeling pain, sadness. I'd rather be feeling pleasure and gladness. <coughs> My Lord. <clears throat> Job 36, 11 said, if you serve him well, <coughs> you'll spend your days In prosperity, and your life will be filled with pleasures. Imagine. Imagine that. So God's not left us in the dark, but we do need to pursue and find a place of operation. It's a place. It's connection with somebody. It's in a certain function, a certain operation, a certain way of doing things, a certain way, a certain time, a certain place. The gift and the treasure and the talent and the calling that's in you needs to be being manifested even on a daily basis, and everything will happen. Money will flow your way, new connections, new favor. Because 95% of prosperity or more, a high percentage like that, is, is, is based on favor. And favor is come, coming from where you show pleasure and where, you, where, you, where you're received and liked and enjoyed and enjoyed. Then you get blessed financially. I mean, money transactions happen, open doors happen, connections happen, your business flourishes, your ministry begins to flourish, your, things begin to happen. Now, one way to get messed up is to stay with the wrong crowd, but
but the wrong crowd could seem like they're the right crowd because they're people even in the kingdom, even fellow saints, maybe like as I was saying, in a church or whatever. But it's just not doing anything for you. Now, let's say a church has a lot of programs and a lot of meetings and a lot of um, things going on. If you're going to get all involved in it, you better know you're called to do that. And that it's also leading you somewhere. Enough said. I'm done with that. God wants to get you somewhere. So you need to discipline yourself. You need to discipline your, yourself in your time and also in your thinking. And you need to fight. Oh, God, you need to fight. You need to be a warrior. I have another. Uh, this is Destiny Determiners. I have another one that I was printing called. Uh, I don't have the title of it. It's called. Uh, it's in my laptop. I put my laptop to the side. It's uh, prophetic prayers for warriors, you know. And a lot of things about having real strength and, and fire and moving in, in the ways uh, of God very aggressively. So in this day and hour, you need to be very aggressive. I'm, I'm looking in Proverbs 24, 21 says, don't associate with rebels. The 22nd verse, actually. For a disaster will hit them. So you need to know who's like, Who's not in the flow? But you know, more than that, it's like what what lights your bulb? All right, I want to stay on that. What this is a real success strategy, and this is a destiny determinator. Yes, it is. What lights your bulb? What illuminates you? What empowers you? What releases you? What activates you? What sparks your interest? What you got to be militant about focusing that thing. All right. Proverbs twenty-five. I saw a, a a scripture here. Let me find it. Yeah, this is just this is just. I'm just throwing this in. This is like off the cuff. Proverbs twenty-five twenty. Singing cheerful songs to a person with a heavy heart is like taking someone's coat in cold weather, or even pouring vinegar into a wound. I thought about that. Let me explain what I what I what my observation about that. This happy, happy, happy song for a sad heart is is it seems nice. We even do it in church. I was talking about I'm talking about church again. But you know what we need to do more than that is we need to go past all that and get into the reality of what wounded the person, what lack of functionality are they having now, and what do they need to get into doing. To make them feel excited. And then the healing power of purpose. Did you get that? The healing power of purpose and its functional operation will actually heal the person. See, we think, oh, you're sad. Okay, let's sing a happy song. I got joy, 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 joy down in my heart. Sing it all you want. Skip and hop. He 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 ha ha ho ho ho. I'm happy. I'm happy. I'm happy. Joy 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 joy. Now you can you can fake it till you make it, so to speak, and it's okay to uh, exercise in that way and start to try to go toward that. But there's a reason for your sorrow. Come on. There's a there's a deep meaning to your pain. There's a deep reason for it. God. And we need to get to the bottom of it. It needs to be get cleared out. We need to uh, just fix it by applying not just a, a, an ointment on a wound or not like a happy song that says it's like pouring vinegar. Can you imagine Solomon? Brilliant. That's a, that's a deep wisdom. You see, sometimes in church we think the opposite. We think, uh, oh, well, you know, go to church and you'll feel good. I, I'm on this today. I don't know if I'll do it again. I probably will, but I haven't done it of late, and I don't know if, I don't know if I'll do it again soon or not, or what, or whatever. Probably I will. I'm sure I will in different settings because it's a very relevant message, and God's given it to me, but I have to tell you. Once again, about the church and even conferences and things like that. I've been to conferences when I get unlocked and I feel totally excited. And I could even go home and think, that was so powerful, and I feel all stirred up, all torn up, 
And then I get, I feel all these other waves of uh, emotions of things because I know there's a lot I need to do, and I start thinking I need to do this and that because I, there's a, was, there was a purposeful uh, application uh, for my anointing and gifting in that thing, in that setting. But I tell you, on the other hand, I've been in conferences where the presence of God, Almighty God, yes, the Holy Spirit, really Him, was in manifestation. And while it was going on, it was great. And you felt all that, but then a very deep misery, even after that. You know why? Because all that was going on there was good for the... It was good for whoever it was good for, and it was supposed to be good for everybody, but somehow there wasn't like a connection of purpose. I got to say it. There wasn't a connection of purpose to the, the manifestation of that. And even that feeling, even the presence of God himself moving was still not enough because God didn't intend it, just that experience to be enough. He wants us all to be functionally operational. I know I use that word a lot. He wants us to be functionally operational in the purpose that he's ordained for us. And that's what's going to give you your joy. That's what's going to give you your peace. That's what's going to give you more love in your heart. That's what's going to give you finance. That's what's going to give you success. That's what's going to give you uh, production and pr productivity and operational uh, operational bliss and, and uh, uh, solution solution giving power to solve problems for the world and people and then that's where there's also commerce and trade in the midst of all that you can call that doing business with god doing business with people in the earth it's a commodity of transactional exchange if you think that's over the top let me tell you what the altar is the altar is simply a place of transaction you bring something you you leave it one way you leave it another way it's a it's a it's a it's a it's a commerce touch from earth to heaven. I'm t I'm telling you, go through the Bible, read it all, and tell and talk to me. Bethel was a place, but it was a place of a connection and a revelation. Even Jehovah Jireh, Yire, was first a place. It was a place where Abraham got the touch and the revelation. Then the expansion place, where the words I was telling you about. Hepzibah, I don't know if I said that one, I'll say it now. Hepzibah, Beulah, Rehoboth, and Bethel, and uh, Canaan land were places of taking it. J the city of Jericho came into the hands of Joshua's uh, people because the Lord gave them the strategy on how to get it. Let me tell you, they all felt good. And even the, 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 the Israelites... The Hebrews, who were the slaves of Egypt, were happy after they left Egypt with the wealth and the silver and the gold given to them. This is powerful. So, my friend, I'm praying for you. I love you. I mean that. I care. God's made me to care. By myself, we may not have met face to face, but... The Spirit of God has anointed me to speak this to you. And there's a connection. And you're part of the family now. I'm, I'm, I'm adopting you into it. I'm telling you this is, there's something here that's going to promote the grace and the gift and the call. And I'm like a kickstarter, a fire lighter, a torch lighter, a fire starter, an initiator, an activator. Now you have to implement. But from today, I declare and speak prophetically. That God is going to um, change the way you use your time and your day. And certain things that you were a part of, you're going to feel, this is not getting it for me. This is not making my world spin <coughs> fast enough. <coughs> Excuse me. This is not helping me get on track with the call and the will of God that he has for me. So... I need to make some adjustments. I, I've had that, that epiphany in that season in that moment. I like the word epiphany. It means uh, like a, just a phenomenal revelation by experience of like, wow, spiritual, like, wow, wow like I got to change. Something comes. 
to give you get to give to, to part the waters and give you a new season to walk in. A new experience as a reference point to give you a vision from heaven. And if you never if you never fulfill the will of God that He's ordained for you, my friend, you've missed the plot. You've lost the plot. You've missed the whole purpose of your life. Your destiny determinator went the wrong way instead of the right way. You got diverted from your destiny instead of determined and being determined to get into it. So more later, the book will come out and I have so much more to say about this. And here's like a little admonition to I. A powerful one. Nothing and no one can stop you unless you let them. Have you ever made a mistake? Have you ever made like a wrong decision? Have you ever trusted someone? Because every tragedy of loss or heartache uh, can be traced back to misplaced trust. You trusted someone you shouldn't have trusted. And, um, and you just relive it all the time and you feel such lament, such languishing, such... Uh, such languishing, such uh, despair and regret. It's tough, but we have to now have the realm of replacement. Let me tell you the way God raises you up and promotes you to another season. He helps you to forget all of your pain and all your sorrow by replacing all the bad with the good. Replacing anything that happened yesterday with something new. And of course, Isaiah 43, 18 and 19, two other Favorites, favorites, favorites of my verses in the scripture that I just love so much. It says, remember not the former things and consider not the things of old, because I, the Lord, behold, I'm going to do a new thing. And now it's going to spring forth. And he says, I'll make rivers and water to run even in the dry place, even in the desert, even in the wilderness. So it doesn't matter where you are. The, the thing is the functionality, please. And I pray and prophesy that you got to get there. I have to go, but you uh, meditate on this, ponder this, replay this broadcast, share it with all your friends, and visit me on the website on thomasmanton.com. And please, you can sow a seed there, you can tithe there, you can offer there, you can first fruit there, you can alms there, you can donate there. You can partner with this great voice that's speaking to nations all over the world. And there's somebody out there that God is really talking to about doing something very, very, very special and major. You get in touch with me. Find me somehow. I'm here. I'm ready to talk to you. And the Lord bless you. And I'm going to pray in the comment section. Everyone that puts a comment and, and says amen or check mark, smiley face, anything. I'm going to speak a prophetic blessing over you. And even you that are watching the replay of this later, because it's a certain time in the course of the day here that everyone's not on. But you'll be seeing this. So you can just jot a note and I, I will get the notification and come back to speak a blessing over you. So I love you so much. The website is www.thomasmanton.com. Dot com T H O M A S M A N T O N dot com in Kenya the M Pesa number is at the top of the screen on the Facebook page but if you need it you can just uh, ask me for it and that will get to me okay so um, arise and shine seasons are changing your destiny determination and determinators are appearing to you now. And there's going to be signs confirming what I prophesied today. You're going to feel like, you know what? I'm, I'm involved in things and taking my time. I got to stop. I have to stop doing it. And I got to get on about the, with the Father's business. Also, I'll be in many cities of the world. And we'll have a way to, you'll find out where I am. And I'd love, to, I'm waiting to see you face to face there. And also, we're going to be having some partner meetings and uh, revival meetings and also prophetic conferences and things like that. And I am 
I'm very excited to see you one day. But right now, we're right here. We're close. You see how close we are? There's my hand. We're right here. So you do right to me, and I'll be looking to hear from you, and I'm praying for you. I love you so much. I'm Thomas Manton IV. More later, talk to you on the next broadcast. In Jesus' name. I just feel that I'm never done. I'm, I'm pausing, but we're going to pick it up next time. So let me put that great, great, great. Let me see if I can find that again. Yeah. As, as we go. So him who sits on the throne. Blessing and glory and honor and power forever. Oh, yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes, that's, that's what it is. I feel there's a wave. I, I feel like, no, there's something else. There's a wave of a touch of healing and deliverance coming upon you now. Receive it from the Lord. There it is. Healing from disease and ailment, tiredness, oppression, affliction. It goes in Jesus' name off your life. God's raising you now. You begin to take territory and go to new lands, new places. Rise up! Rise up! Rise up! And begin to walk and get out there where you need to be. Open doors, open doors for your business, for your ministry, for your life. Promotion. It's coming forth in the name of Jesus. Touch my friend, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, there it is. Holy Spirit, thank you for delivering, complete, breaking of all oppression, fear, loneliness, lack. Let money come, let people come, let new friends come, let new favor come. As the harvest to all of our partners and friends, let it come forth in the name of Jesus. Right now, let the power of Almighty God touch to the ends of the earth. Every person is ready to step up the game, go to the next level, get up from where they are, stop wasting time, get moving. That thing that you call and ordained them to do, Lord. Mother broke the kill of Blessing and honor and glory and power forever. Ooh. God bless you. Talk to you later.